Grace and peace to you all, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for truly we serve an awesome God and we just thank God for another day. Amen. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you. People of God, I want to encourage you in the word of God to let you know that when the Lord said says that he will fight for you, you have to hold your peace. Hallelujah. Many times people of God, God can give us a word and he can let us know that he's fighting for us. And a lot of time we begin to interrupt what God is doing because we begin to step in the place instead of letting God do the fighting for you. Amen. When you look at the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter, this is what the Lord began to tell Israel. He began to let them know that the Lord will fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So there are many times people of God, when God is telling you to hold your peace, you can interrupt things by you continue to say things or you'll continue to do things because you're handling it. You're trying to handle it, it in your own way. And see, when you do that, now you causes God to have to stand back. You have, you, you stop him from operating in your life because now you took over. But if you just realize according to the word of God, when he began to tell Israel this, how he brought Israel out with a mighty hand, because he let them know that I'm going to fight for you. And you got to realize that when God do the fight and people, God, you have already won. He began to let Israel know. He said, for I shall let the Egyptians know that I am God. Hallelujah. So thus, there are some fights that you're in spiritually that God wants your enemy to see that he is God. It doesn't matter what your enemy tried to do against you or what they try to plot against you. When God said that he is fighting for you, you got to know that it's a done deal. You got to know that you've already won. Hallelujah. Just, just like in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, when the Bible tells us in the third verse, he began to let us know. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. There are some strongholds that's in your life that's keeping you bound, that's keeping you in one set place. And the Lord began to let us know. He began to say, you know, I'm trying to let you know that if you do not war in your flesh, you're going to win. Hallelujah. The war. Hallelujah. Because even though we're in this flesh and we know that some things come up against us will cause us to hurt in the flesh. But we got to know that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. I can't continue to use the weapons of this world, but I got to use the weapons of Jesus Christ. I got to continue to pray. I got to continue to fast. And you got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You got to see God working this thing out for you. You got to know that if God said it, then God is going to do it. I'm not worrying about my haters. I'm not worried about those that's trying to plot up against me. See, you giving too much energy to that, to that negative vibe instead of rejoicing and praising the Lord thou God knowing that he is the awesome God. He is the great I am. He's mighty in battle. He's my strong tower. He's the everlasting life. He's the prince of peace. He's El Shaddai. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. You got to know the God that you're serving. That you don't get so you know, so confused and you don't get so upset because of things that you see and because of things that you hear when the Lord said, if you just hold your peace, I'll fight for you. You can't straighten out everything. Everything was not meant for you to straighten it out. There are some things in your life that God wants to show that he is God. And that's what he told Israel. In the book of um, Exodus, the 14th chapter, the 18th verse, the Bible said, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horse horsemen. See, sometimes in your life, the things that you're going through, God is going to get the glory. Yes, your enemy set up a plot against you. Yes, your enemy tried to put stumbling blocks in your way. Yes, your enemy tried to count to try to cast stones against you. But God is going to be glorified if we learn to walk in this flesh, but not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God in what? Pulling down these strongholds. Anything that's my God is trying to hold me back. I got to realize that it's the power of God that's going to cause me to be free every time. 
So even though some things that you see might be operating in your life, you got to know that when the hand of God is upon you, the enemy shall know. See, the enemy already know that he's defeated. But he uses other people. And what they don't realize is that when God has his hand upon an individual, no weapon that's forming against them is going to prosper. Why? Because of the hand of the Lord is upon them. And what we have to know as saints of God is that I still cannot war in my flesh. I still cannot handle this in a fleshly manner. I got to do what the Lord is commanding me to do. Let me walk in the spirit, in prayer, in fasting, in letting my light so shine before men by my good works that they're going to glorify my father. See, and this is what the Bible says in the 24th verse. It said, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord. Women, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch the Lord look unto the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and trouble the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. See, sometimes you got to realize that your enemy may think that you have been defeated. And so the Bible begins to let us know that God began to trouble the host of the Egyptian. He began to confuse their minds. So many times people get their minds is so confused because they think that what they set up against you, that is working. But if you stay in the hand of the Lord and you continue to be faithful to the work of God and you do not turn to the elements of this world and you don't try to use the tactics of this world against those that might be doing you wrong, then you have the victory. But a lot of times, people of God, we don't have the victory because we're still operating in this flesh. We're still doing things according to this world. And what God wants you to know is that when I tell you that I'm going to fight for you and to hold your peace, that is exactly what it means. Hold your peace. You got to close your mouth. You got to study to be quiet and see the work of God that works things out on your behalf. Always trying to fix things. Always trying to get somebody straight. No, that's fleshly. See, that's why you got to get into your secret place with the Lord. And you begin to pray against everything that's trying to come against you. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said to put on the whole armor of God. So we'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. That means that we will not use the devil tools to try to beat him because he loves when you, when you use his tools because he knows that the flesh, the fleshly tools are going to lose. The fleshly tools are going to get you out of the will of God. So that's what he loves. But when we put, when we put on the whole armor of God, that when we put on truth, hallelujah. The, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of salvation. Come on, putting on a whole arm of God that we can withstand the wiles of the devil, his tricks and his schemes. That I'm not looking at, at it from a natural eye because the Bible say I walk by faith and not by sight. That it doesn't matter what you try to do against me. God said I shall fight for you. All I want you to do is hold your peace because I am going to show them that I am God. And he began to let them know because, see, they were so caught up in, in the materialistic things, their chariots that they had until they had to see that when God began to remove the wheels that they had to see and say, my God, let us move out of the face of Israel because the Lord is fighting for them. Yes, God is fighting for you. And they shall know that he's fighting for you when they see that what they're trying to do, it will not work. No weapon form against you is going to prosper. You got to know that because when you really know that and you ain't just quoting it just to say something to make your flesh feel happy, but it's in your spirit because God said it. I know his word is true. 
So I know that everything that they try to do is going to fall to the ground. It's going to be dismissed. Why? Because I have the power and the authority over the works of darkness. But see what the enemy tries to do. He tries to confuse you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tried to put a, 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 a spirit of confusion on you. Because when you're asking God some things and, and, and you begin to see things and it seems like it's not happening the way that you think it should happen. Then you begin to walk back in doubt. You begin to walk back in fear. And those spirits are against God. Just like these children of Israel. My God, they saw the army coming. But God already had told them, said, listen, listen, I'm going to show them that I am God. Come on. It took God to begin to divide the sea for Israel, for the children of Israel to cross over on dry land. Your situation is a miracle that God is getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Your enemy thought that they had you. Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, yes, because see, that's what the devil doing for them. He's confusing their minds because you know what? Satan want people to work for him. He want them to do evil. Why? Because he know where his end is going to be. And he's trying to get as many as he can to go with him. So he will put a, he, 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 he'll begin to fool them and have them thinking that what they're doing is actually working. And when God said, mm -mm, no weapon form against them is going to prosper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm going to fight for you. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. I'm going to show them that, that I am God. So it's time that we know that we walk in this flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of your, of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Mighty in God. It takes God. It takes God. And that's why you can't leave him out. That's why we got to continue to submit ourselves to him because everything that we do is going to be in the spirit of God, not in your own self, because in your own self, you're going to lose. So people of God, I encourage you in this hour that whatever God is telling us to do, let's do it. If he said, I'm going to fight for you, hold your peace, study to be quiet. Let God be glorified. You're trying to straighten out too much of stuff. They lied on you. Yeah, I understand they did. They told, they, 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 they told a good lie on you. Every lie you can't correct. Because sometimes they got it out there and it, and it depends on who, and, and, and it, depends on, it depends on the liar that told the lie can convince other people to believe the lie. So you have to let God fight your battle. Not trying to fix and straighten out everything because sometimes <clears throat> you can tell the truth and they still don't believe you. It's okay. As long as you know what you did was right in the eyesight of God, and I'll tell you, even if you did things that was wrong, you get it right. You go and apologize. Get it right. And even if people still choose to lie on you, let God fight for you. Quit trying to do this in your own strength because you're not going to win. That's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you're still pondering. Remember what they did to me, what they said about me. No, baby. God wants to give you sweet sleep. My God, he's the watchman at night that when we sleep, the Bible says he never sleeps a slumber. Hallelujah. Watching over us. So we want to be in that place with God that he's watching over us. That whatever the enemy trying to do, baby, it will not work. And it shall not work and it's coming down. It's coming down. I say it's coming down. All those strongholds are being pulled down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because God is getting ready to release his glory. Yes, upon your life. Yeah, 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 yes. Yes, he is. God is getting ready to do it. Why? Because you've been faithful. You stood the test. And see, now you're allowing the enemy to get in your ear. You need to tell that devil he's a liar. I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I know what God said. God told me the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. I can't do tit for tat. I can't try to get them back. I got to go into prayer. And I began to war in prayer. So everything that the enemy tries to do is falling to the ground. And it's being dismissed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Knowing that with Christ, there is victory. And I choose to live for Jesus Christ. Be encouraged.